This is three rounds in a paved catch weight bow. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist, weighing in 147.7 pounds. Standing five foot, five inches tall. His professional fight record of two wins with two defeats. Mariano Vromedia presenting Nihaitza His opponent standing across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist, weighing in 128.8 pounds, standing five foot, three inches tall, with a professional fight record of eight wins, with 17 defeats. Fighting out of Brazil, Romania, presenting Leon Corona. Going to Yorga, will he be able to implement that or will? I'm ready. I'm ready. Cristiano, Go close back. the distance. Go back. Just as I was coming back, Phil, I did hear you say that. Fight. Big difference in height, and that's always in that fight for Ranciano. He's, he's, he's always going to be the smallest guy in the cage, but he doesn't care, Phil. Coming in almost 10 pounds lighter than his opponent. Of course, a catch weight bout. With a record of 8 and 17, Phil, you'd be thinking, nah, this guy's an absolute journeyman. But when you actually watch his fights, he has that unbelievable looping right hand that can end the fight. He's always in exciting fights. He goes in and fights on his sword and goes out on his shield. It's incredible. It's a big leg kick landed by Iorga. But yeah, as you say, competitive to the very end is Porcianu. I think we may see him try and strike to close the distance to, to get the clinch, because right now he can't really afford to stand in the kicking range of Iorga. He's got to either be all the way in or all the way out, Phil. But again, similar to the first fight, both fighters really feeling each other out. They will. Of course, both fighters being Romanian, they'll have known that they're from the local circuit as well. So, Ugora will definitely be aware of the power that Francino possesses in that right hand. But what he may be giving up in height, he has the distinct advantage and experience. He's been in this cage, he's been in this situation against a relative newcomer who only has four mixed martial arts bouts to his name. And as well, a low center of gravity can uh, mm. get him to change level and get in a shot straight away. Trying to pat down that jab to come over the top. Smart though, boy, Ugaro, as you said, less experience, but at the moment he's just slowly getting himself into this one, not rushing. Trying to very much keep the fight at kicking range, and I think he's acutely aware that Borsianu will need to close the distance and wrestle, and he can't really get the pop off his shots if his lead leg is true up. So it's very intelligent from the, the young man with only four bites to his record. Inside leg kick, and Borsianu tried to return it, a referee just demanding a bit of action. Just coming up to two minutes, and not a lot, Phil, both sizing each other more so. You can tell by how high Jorg is keeping that right hand. He's almost anticipating a big looping shot coming in. They are nice leg kicks, and they're money in the bank for the later rounds that Jorg is landing. That's exactly it. No, it's an investment, because you're trying to take that, that pop out of the step. Oh, that's a big head kick. Went low a number of times, and he may be wobbled, lands another he big looks, strike. He looks a little weak there, as in probably on the legs. Doing well to get out of distance there, but... That's Bresciano backing up now against the cage. And he's stepping off, trying not to dive in on a wounded animal, but these are cumulative damaging strikes being thrown by Jorga. And Jorga not panicking, Phil, and rushing the veteran. He's seen he heard him, landed a couple of combinations, but didn't bull rush him, maybe get caught himself. Also with a beautiful left head kick set that up, but... Janu said he looks to maybe have recovered here, Phil. He does indeed. He seems to have gathered his wits about him, but again, I think you're going to see Jorga low, 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 then high again. It seems to work for him, but oh, that's a big check there as well. Shin on shin action. He seems to be stuck and trying to cut off the cage, and Janu was starting to come forward again. He maybe wasn't pushing as forward as much after getting caught with that head kick. Romanian fighters, a lot of them a lot of kickboxing and Kempo K1 experience as well. So you're going to see a lot of savvy strikers here when the Romanians are in the cage tonight. What I think is telling is there, you can see Virciano already switching stances. Now that to me, as an onlooker, yeah. says that he has damaged the leg, that Jorga has damaged the legs with those strikes, so he's not offering that, that leg to hit. Momentarily switching stances, trying to give the lead leg a little bit of a rest. 
Luciano was looking low to maybe try and go high himself there. Maybe close the distance, coming up on a minute to go. And that's normally if the game plan is get it to the ground to try and get a takedown, to try and steal the round. But what I would like to see is Verciano being a little bit more aggressive. That's a good jab. He needs to punch his way in if he's to establish an underhook, double underhooks and work for that takedown. He needs to be wary of dropping those hands, trying to catch the leg kick, because if Iorg is wise to that and catches it, he can come over the top. That's a nice looping right hand he had, just coming around the, the high left hand of Iorg, just trying to clip him on the chin. But so far, the significant strikes of this round have come by the, the younger fighter. Oh, that's a big loop in overhand, as you said, No, Just timing the kick as well on that occasion, Phil. Just as Uorga was thrown, that kick, the big right hand came over, and he's had success in his previous fights. Watching back the footage, as I said, the record doesn't do justice. He's been in a lot of wars. You can see Virciano, he's thinking about closing the distance. He's trying to put Iorga up against the cage, but every time Iorga feels the cage behind him, he circles off implementing some smart lateral movement. You can see it in the body now of your orbit. Just that one kick that landed has reddened the body. There's the takedown, almost a clash of heads. Nice uppercut and a nice oh, right hand by Uorga. one another. Uorga lands a big right hand and a big right kick as well. Oh, the bell goes potentially saving their big shots landed right at the end of the first round. And both fighters almost heard the clapper in time. It's time for action. And Wow, Vrachenny, we feel he's sporting a beautiful beard, but he's got a beautiful beard because he is oh. He's taken some big shots and he's still in the fight. That was a gargantuan shot to finish the round, but as you say, just withstood the withstood the action. But Morgan charging forward. Here's a look at the earlier in the round, and that's the, the money in the bank that we said. And this set up the high kick, working the inside leg, his kicks continuously fail. Goes high, and he did partially block it, but that will show you that the strength that went into that kick partially looked injured, but Uorga didn't panic, Phil. It was almost as if at the end of that round, Verciano said to himself, I need to put the pressure on, I need to do something here, but Iorga was thinking the exact same thing. And again, the more telling strikes landed in the opening and closing stanzas of that fight go to Iorga. Yeah, and Iorga just, it, that kick just whiskered across the whiskers of Verciano, and second round's already underway here. Again, the action picked up, it all came off both fighters looking to get a takedown right at the end of the first round, and a firefight broke out. If I were in the corner of Iorga, I would be telling them right now to just keep doing what you're doing, keep fighting at distance, keep yeah. landing your strikes, and conversely, if I was in the corner of Vorciano, I would be telling him to fight his way into the inside. Mix it up, turn this into less of a point-style fight, and turn it into something nasty, a little bit of a phone box fight. Get in and mix things up. As you're saying that, he's picked up where he left off at the beginning of the first round, he's going to the well with them kicks to the leg, and then changing up high. Phil, you, you said if you were in the corner you, of what you're saying, what would you say in, in the opposite corner? Of what advice are you giving? Of Orciano, I'd be telling him to fight his way into the inside, to punch his way in, throw punches and bunches, threes and fours to close the distance, bring the hands of your opponent up, therefore exposing the body and leaving them susceptible to the shoot. Goes high this time with the right kick, but Orciano just got the hands up to, to block that. And you can almost see, Phil, maybe a little bit of um, thought before he rushes in, them shots of... Definitely made Bresciano think a little more while he's coming in. Both men implementing smart footwork. As I say, Bresciano putting Iorga on the back foot, but as soon as Iorga again feels that cage, it's almost as if he's, he's keeping an eye on the, the outer rim of the cage, that black line, and as soon as he feels... Oh, oh that's the leg kick! That's absolutely no huge! No need for any more! It was the setup of the leg kicks, and Philly went high, and this is one of the best knockouts you will see. A stunning, stunning right head kick by Uorga ends the night. Ladies and gentlemen, fighters backstage, we potentially have fight of the night, fight of the year. Forget going for that tonight, Phil. Take a bow. Me Haitza Lorenzo Iorga with one of the most devastating head kick KOs I have seen in my time calling fights at only 23 years old and with only now five fights under his belt. That's a contender for knockout of the year, no looking. And Phil, in all honesty as well, you've got to give it. It's something that you see a lot when a fighter strikes and lands. You fight till the referee stops it. Uorga looked like he was going in for another shot, but he stepped away as he's seen he was out. But Phil, 
talk me through this. That was beautiful. He pawed with the jab, and again, as you say, pulled that last punch. That he would have been well within his rights yeah. to throw. You go to the referee, tell you to set up there. But it was almost as if he almost threw like a quasi question mark kick. Yeah. He was looking low the whole time. That brings the hands down of Bushianu, and then over the top. That's Shin on dome knockout. Yeah, that's knocking out a rhino, Phil. That is knocking out a rhino. Just to make you aware that our medics are in with Bracciano. He is okay. He's just they're giving him some air at the moment. What a stunning, stunning knockout by the young man. Talk about creating and taking an opportunity. Would have been on the, I suppose, the prelim cards only for pullouts and injuries. Takes this fight on short notice at catchweight and comes in and makes a statement. But this comes back to what we were talking about in the opening stanza of the fight. With great risk comes great reward. And we're seeing the fruits of the labor, of the chance taken by Mihaitsa there. Absolutely stunning knockout. And this could be the, the, the point through which he propels his career on. Great to see Borciano on his feet. I think the medics are just going to take care of him and he'll exit the cage straight away and get the, the necessary attention and the necessary help from the medics there. Once again, fighter safety is paramount here at Brave Combat Federation. Multiple medics, doctors and trained staff around the cage. But so far, fight number two, and this night belongs to Mihaitsa Lorentu Iorga. Let's throw it up to Noel O'Keefe for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at 3 minutes and 34 seconds of round number 2. Here